mind-blowing top 13 composition pitfalls and how to avoid them. What's up, Gleb Alexandrov here for CreativeShrimp.com, the place where artists learn tips and tricks about computer graphics, art and coffee brewing. Thank you so much guys uh, who share the artworks on the art review session on Renando Martinez website. Uh, it was such an exciting event and I'm deeply grateful to you guys and thank you Renando, thank you Guillermo Henrique. Uh, you are a superheroes. Together we'll change the world of computer graphics and together as a community uh, we'll make a better artworks. That's the case. And why composition is important? It's obvious to me that if you know composition mistakes you know how to avoid them and as a consequence you'll create a better art and you'll attract more clients if you work as a freelancer or, or your art will get featured in the magazines like 3D artists for example and so composition is a key to creating a more striking, more prominent, more readable, more better artworks. Just keep watching and I'll show the exact steps that you need to take to avoid these 13 uh, most common composition pitfalls. Alright, now let's get started with number one mistake, very common mistake, it's too dark. Uh, let's start off by picking the image by Michelle Saunders. How we can make it better? Michelle, I think we can really make it better just by raising the exposure. Uh, and by tweaking the RGB curves, we can make it a lot more readable. Easy peasy. Just raise the RGB curves and you're good to go. And in this impeccable image made by Brian, we can uh, do the same kind of trick. We can raise the levels, but only in the window area. Uh, by doing it, we'll boost the overall contrast and we will juxtapose the lighter tones of the window to the darker tones of the room. Which is always nice and very expressive. And this image already contains so many different interesting details, we just have to make it a little brighter. See, we just made it better. And that was the number one composition mistake that is called too dark. Fear of the dark. And the composition mistake number two is framing. So often we're just leaving huge empty space uh, in our picture. We can safely just delete it and concentrate the attention of the viewer on the subject. And when you set up the camera, ask yourself, can I move this camera closer to the main subject? Can I crop the empty space? And this image by Flo can be improved using the same technique. Just think. Can I crop uh, the unnecessary space? What is the main subject? And delete everything else to get that oomph going on. And yet another image by Michelle Richette uh, that can be framed a little bit differently. Look how I crop the empty space. To doom. And because we cropped the image, uh, the eyes of the character got more visual weight. This awesome image by Cody Winchester has a bit different problem. The pumpkin and other points of interest are placed too close to the edges. And by adding some air and some lighting in the process, we improve it greatly. Now you can see the triangle going on in the middle of the image. And here is the original version. And here is the version with more air. So decision to frame your image is a very important one. Spend some time on finding the right framing for your image. And the next point is where is the point of interest? Let's illustrate it on the example of the image by Oliver Garcia. The vegetation, the details are just unbeatable, but the scene lacks the main subject. And here's what I did. I just created a hero tree to serve as a point of interest. And that is exactly how you can avoid uh, the composition pitfall of not having the main subject, the focal point or the point of interest. Alright, now it looks very cool. Let's just look on the, another image made by Joanna Lukovic. On this image, while the details and the presentation is striking, it has the same kind of problem. It doesn't have very well defined focal point. See what I did here? I blocked the corner to not let the viewer go away from the picture. And then I made these circular gates a lot brighter. And I think that works really well in this case. 
and here is the matte painting by Hugo and Hugo I'm not sure whether we need to apply the same kind of technique to your image but we can try and see whether it improves it or not and by defining the point of interest we can guide the viewers eye into the image so far so good and the next composition pitfall is the figure doesn't stand out from the background and that one is very important perhaps the most important in many cases so keep watching now a bit of magic it's perfect and it was very good already but because the figure didn't stand out from the background we didn't really see it so always think about that separation between the background and the figure and we can treat this fisherman's hut or the cabin in the woods by Samat the same way I'll just make your subject uh, stand out from the background and you will be good to go simple trick and a great outcome I'm loving it Another composition mistake sounds like that, too centered. You know, if something becomes too too balanced, it have a risk to become boring. Oh, by the way, this image by Coffee Overload. And here I moved it to the right third to break the balance. And um, it's a common place in photography, the rule of thirds. When you're framing or positioning your object, place it uh, where the lines intersect, where the thirds intersect rather. Alright, let's move on to very exciting, very hot subjects, and that is too uniform lighting. And you probably know lighting is my bread, butter and cocaine, and I love that when lighting is striking. So if your point of interest is a very reflective coffee machine, try rotating your IGRI or positioning light sources this way, so it will create the prominent reflections. Experiment with light source position and uh, spend some time on finding the right camera angle. And this pumpkin guy by Quentin just asks to be illuminated. It just begs you to add some light sources in to define the stronger key light, like that. And when you don't know what's wrong with your lighting, start with a key light. And build everything else on top of that base. For example, add a rim light of a complementary color. Alright, another example, let's take this image by Christina Ducci. Here we need just to boost the contrast by raising the intensity of the directional light. Also we need to experiment with the roughness of the shaders and so on. The point is to boost the contrast and the visual interest by emphasizing our lighting. Uh, Christina already made very appealing lighting. And now we just need to make it really pop. And that's exactly what I'm doing with the lighting project, uh, the book that I'm writing. So if you have a free time, I recommend checking it out on creativeshrimp.com slash book. Much appreciated. The same principles are true in the case of the image by Peter Gottfeld. Perhaps let's put a stronger key light and add a rim light. Pretty much that's a classical three-point lighting scheme, but it works very nice in this case. And I'm not a huge fan of three-point lighting, but it just works. I cannot deny it, damn it. And sometimes you just have to boost lighting in the post-processing. Uh, by adding a soft glow, glare and other effects, it will create a new gradients. Uh, people love gradients. Okay, at least very painterly image that we love. Uh, it can be so greatly improved just by adjusting lighting. And this principle is kind of branching from the number one mistake of too dark of the overall underexposure, but has a slightly different vibe to it. And surprisingly, the opposite is true. Too many lights is the mistake too. It can ruin uh, the brilliant images with a great potential. And if you look at this image, you'll notice that it is super detailed. The modeling is top notch, but too many lights. Let's create just one light. And right away you can see how we just avoided one more composition pitfall. Guys and girls, let's put it straight. Uh, in main cases, it's better to have one dominant light and start from that point. Keep it as minimal as you can, it will enhance the composition. And white, if you have a scene like that, I'd recommend to choose what will be stronger. The light coming from the window or the lamps. Uh, because when they're equal, it pretty much ruins the lighting. Here I made the light from the window stronger, and I think it helps us 
uh, to emphasize the characters and it creates a more pleasant image. But fortunately for us all, uh, this problem has a very simple solution, just turn some light sources off. And another dreadful composition pitfall is not enough variation. Human eye loves variation. Uh, when we travel through the image, we need visual stimuli. We naturally need some variation. So add variation in models, variation in textures and variation in lighting. And you're good to go. Also, you can add a Travolta. Uh, the next principle of composition uh, give us some more details. Look, your image may have very nice so-called first read when you look at the image and you, you go wow. And then you zoom in and start to look at the details and oh, the second read and the third read need to be awesome too if you want to create overall awesome impression. So play with the silhouettes and add the details here and there, especially if the high contrast stuff is going on here on the foreground. Uh, so where to add the details in the first place? Obviously find your focal point and crush it. Ooh, the robots by Oliver, he calls it uh, ideas, like an iPhone. Uh, it's about the details too, because the mind shapes are well defined, we have a focal point, we just have to add the edge scratches, some decals, and it will look awesome, it will look brilliant. Okay, the same thing here, we have a very well defined point of interest, the sphere, but at the second glance it lacks details. And now we've added the details, and this object will catch our eye immediately. And we'll look at it for a longer time, and we'll go, oh, these wires, the interesting details and stuff. And uh, So to sum it up, uh, the details are very important on the second and the third read of the image. And here we have another killer mistake, uh, the lack of depth. Fantastic image by Ahmed. Uh, two things it needs right now. First thing, to define the character. And the second thing, to add an aerial perspective. And just by playing with aerial perspective, with atmospheric perspective, we added so much depth to it. And in my opinion, this epic sci-fi, I think, greatly benefits from it. Another very common problem that I see so often is the scale problem. And I know it myself when you're creating a scene, I just happen to ignore the scale. And one very efficient way to fix uh, this behavior is to add a human figure in the scene, human model. By doing it, you will create a stellar scale reference and will plan your buildings and whatever else accordingly. As Guillermo suggested, you can download the human model from BlendSwap and append it to your 3D scene even before starting modeling. Okay, we're almost there and the next psychedelic thing is two static composition. And what do I mean by saying static? Uh, if you have lines in your composition, the lines in the cloth, the lines in the background, in the net, uh, you can add a flow to it, you can curve it so it will point out to your character and create an interesting dynamic stuff going on. And it's not only about the pose of the character, it's mainly about the flow and the tension of the lines. But I'd like to say a few more words about the pose. So if your scene implies the fast movement, uh, pose your character accordingly. And in some other cases you can increase uh, the dynamic look of the scene by tilting the camera, but that's a whole different story. Cool, thanks for staying with me. And another composition pitfall for today is too noisy. If you look at the image and you notice that it's a bit oversaturated or the background is a bit cluttered, ask yourself, can I just remove something? Can I make it simpler? Because as I've said, it's all about guiding the viewer's eye. What is the point of interest? What I can remove? That are the questions. And we just covered uh, the main composition pitfalls that you can avoid by using these 13 techniques. Thanks and looking forward to your new artworks with improved composition. Alright, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. That was Gleb Alexandrov for creativeshrimp.com and see you next time. Looking forward to seeing your next artworks with improved composition. I hope you've learned something from these 30 most common composition pitfalls. Looking forward to your next works. Uh, take care. Together we'll change the world of computer graphics.